Have you ever been in a situation where you were working with both Aviva, formerly Wonderware Software, and some other client, HMI, SCADA, or other, and needed to share data? Perhaps your company acquired another company or assets, and a non-Wonderware HMI SCADA needs to be integrated as part of the assets. Or perhaps your company merged with another, and now your Wonderware system needs to integrate with some other system. Your options for sharing data largely depend on what software interfaces this other system supports. In this video, we walk through how to share your Aviva system platform or Aviva InTouch data via OPC UA using the Data Hub OPC Gateway for situations where you're working with an OPC UA capable client application that needs access to process data in your Wonderware system. So first off, we need to go into the System Platform Management Console of Aviva Wonderware. So here's my SMC. First we need to expand the Operations Integration Server Manager, then the default group, then local, then the operations integration supervisory servers section. And then we're interested in the Wondor gateway, so we'll expand that. Now just be aware that if you're using an older version of Wonderware, the labeling for some of these might be different, as this was former, formerly referred to as FS Gateway, and will still work with FS Gateway. So here in OI Gateway is what we're interested in. So we're going to expand OI.gateway.2 select configuration and I'm going to right click on that configuration so there are multiple options here as you can see if you're looking to expose system platform data you would select add orchestra connection for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to select add in touch connection to expose data from a tag in my in touch application so We'll just leave the connection at the default name for demo purposes, new underscore in touch underscore zero zero zero. Uh, now over here in the connection parameters, we need to browse to the path of my in touch applications project folder. So I want to click the item browse path and I want to go to C colon users public wonderware in touch applications and uh, the project my project that I'm interested in is example to OPC UA so I'm going to highlight that and click OK then we need to select the tag with the data I'm interested in so I'm going to click the tag browser option and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and uh, the uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm simply access. I'm going to access a simulated random data tag that my InTouch application is accessing from another data source. It will generate random changing data, so we can see the connection is working later in the OPC UA client. So I'm going to select pump pressure, which is the piece of data I'm interested in, and click OK. And now I can click the Save button up here at the top to save these parameters of my OI gateway connection to InTouch. So now that I have my connection configured, I can actually make an OPC DA connection to the OPC DA prog ID oi.gateway.2 for my OPC DA client in the Data Hub OPC Gateway. So first though, as you can see there's a red X here, I need to right click on this and activate my OI Gateway server. And you can see now there's a green checkbox. Um, so you'd, you'd need to make sure that your OI gateway was activated in order to be able to connect to it. So now we're good to go. Uh, now we'll go over to the Data Hub configuration. So I'm just going to minimize this, bring up my Data Hub configuration. And you can launch this, uh, if it's not already open, you can launch this from the system tray down here. Uh, or you can access it from the Programs menu. Huh. That's going to be listed under Cogent, Cogent Data Hub. So I'm going to go back to my desktop. Here are my Data Hub properties. I need to go, as we're making an OPC DA connection to the OI Gateway, I need to go to my OPC DA section. And if you're not familiar with Data Hub, it can act as both an OPC DA client and server. For this tutorial, Data Hub will be acting as an OPC DA client to the OI Gateway, as I just mentioned. Just ensure that this act as an OPC client to these servers box is enabled. And now we just need to click the add button to add our connection. And I'm going to label my connection name simply InTouch. And since Data Hub's on the same machine as the OI gateway, we can leave the computer name as localhost. Now if we click the down arrow for the field for OPC server name, the OI gateway 
uh, actually has a friendly name of simply Gateway, as you can see in this list uh, of friendly names for uh, locally installed OPC DA servers. So I'm going to select Gateway. Uh, and in Data Hub, sets of data are organized in configurable groupings called data domains. For our purpose, I'm going to define a data domain of called InTouch Data <laughs> instead of default. So call that InTouch Data. Now we're going to leave all these other settings um, at the at the defaults. I'm going to go down to item selection. Rather than load all items, since I'm only currently interested in one item, I'm going to uncheck load all items. I'm going to check manually select items, and then I'm going to click configure items button. This allows us to browse the OI gateway address space. So if I scroll down, I can see my InTouch connection that we left at the default labeling. So I just want to expand that. Scroll down, and there's my pump pressure item, so I just want to tick the box to the left of that item name. You'll see that added it to my selected items. Now I'm going to click OK. And then we can simply click OK again to finish con configuring our OPC DA client connection to the OI gateway. Uh, then I want to click the Apply button to make those changes take effect in the runtime. And you can see my status up there for that client connection has just changed to running, so we're good to go there. Now I can confirm that we're accessing the data for the pump pressure item in my InTouch application by clicking View Data, expand my data domain, go to my connection. You'll see that that value is changing with good quality. I can go back, I can go to my Window Viewer InTouch and show that the value is changing there as well. So that matches up there, slightly different update rates. Uh, but uh, so that shows that we're act, act we're successfully accessing the data from our InTouch project in data up. So now we can go ahead and click this data browser. And the next step, now that we have the data in Data Hub, is exposing that data from InTouch to the OPC UA client application. In addition to OPC DA client and server support, Data Hub also supports OPC UA client and server functionality. For the purposes of this tutorial, Data Hub will be acting as an OPC UA server. So we just need to go to the OPC UA section. And uh, we'll be connecting from a sample OPC UA client from Unified Automation called UA Expert. Now, since the focus here uh, is to get a basic connection from the UA client to data up going as quickly as possible, we won't cover every setting in this section. I would encourage you to click the Help button and reference the Help file for full details on each of these settings. And uh, we also have another tutorial video that goes through more detail on setting up the UA server and making a UA client connection to the data hub. Uh, so, data hub installs. Uh, Enabled, enabled to act as an OPC UA server. As you can see, this checkbox is already ticked by default. So there should be nothing to enable there. And if you're simply making a local connection from a UA client on the same machine as Data Hub, the out-of-the-box default settings will allow you to do so without any further configuration in the Data Hub. However, since one of the biggest advantages of OPC UA is making remote connections securely and efficiently, we'll perform a connection using secure encryption and user authentication just to show you how that's done. As you can see here uh, under the protocol section, Data Hub supports three different protocols for UA clients to connect. OPC.TCP, which you can see here is the most common protocol for UA connections. HTTP and HTTPS are available and may require port exceptions to be made in any firewalls on your network for the ports specified for these connections in Data Hub, which is beyond the scope of this video. Talk to your corporate IT department about making firewall exceptions if you need or want to use HTTP or HTTPS instead of OPC.TCP. Uh, now additionally, as you can see, each of these protocols has checkboxes. You can disable any of these protocols to further secure your data up for protocols you don't plan to use. So for our purposes, we're going to be using the OPC.TCP protocol using the default port of 51310. If for some reason it's necessary to change the port or ports, they are fully configurable by selecting the protocol and clicking the Edit Port button, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that because we're going to use the default port. Uh, additionally, uh, you'll notice the computer name IP field, which composes part of the URL endpoint for the UA server, is pre-populated with the host name of the local machine. Uh, that field is configurable, though, if you wish to use a different name. Also part of the UA endpoint URL is the endpoint name, which further allows you to define a custom name for your data hub to make it easier to identify this UA server when connecting from a UA client. 
We'll keep the defaults for both of these options. Now, notice there's also a button over here for copying the endpoint to the clipboard, which makes it easy to then paste the correct endpoint when you're configuring your UA client connection later. So I'm going to go ahead and click that so that I have that in my clipboard. And uh, clicking the advanced button takes us to the properties related to the supported security policies for each endpoint and what user authentication options are allowed or not. So for our purposes, we're only consider concerned with the general section here. Uh, by default, as you can see, all security policies are enabled for use. So out of the box, we could connect using uh, basic SHA-256, um, basic 256, SHA-256, um, just basic 256, basic 128 RSA 15, or using no encryption at all. Um, since basic 256, SHA-256 is the most secure, we'll connect using that, which we'll want to remember for later when we're configuring our client connection. Now, for user authentication, all the options possible are allowed by default. Just be aware that the anonymous option that's enabled here means that any UA client could connect without requiring a username and password. This is convenient for testing, but not recommended for long-term production runtime. It should be disabled. Uh, we'll be using a username and password, which I'll show you how to configure in just a moment. Since we didn't make any changes here, I'm just going to go ahead and click Cancel. Now, to add a user uh, for uh, OPC UA authentication, we need to go to the Security section of Data Hub, and then we need to click the Configure Permissions button. So, as you can see, I already have a uh, username and password uh, configured that I'm going to use, K Rutherford, and a password. Now, to add a, add a user, you simply click in the Username field at the bottom um, and enter the desired username, and then after that, you click in the Password field and enter the desired associated password for that user. Um, after that, you want to highlight the user and over under um, Group Memberships, you want to make sure, at a minimum, you have basic connectivity uh, enabled for that user in order to be able to make a UA connection to it. And then you would click Apply and Close to, to, to apply those changes. Uh, and if you did make any other changes in your data configuration at all, it's always a good idea just to make sure you click the Apply button at the bottom, just to make sure that those are going to take effect in the runtime. For now, we've actually configured everything we need to in data to get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And uh, for this test, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use the UA Expert from Unified Automation, um, which is uh, which you can download from free from the Unified Automation website. Uh, do note that if it's your first time launching the UA Expert, you'll be prompted to create a new security instance certificate. I've already done this, so this step isn't necessary for this exercise. So first, I want to add a connection to Data Hub, so I'm going to right-click on Servers and select Add. Now with Data Hub, uh, it actually installs with and registers with a, a UA Discovery Server service on the local machine. Um, so as you can see here under local, um, you could we could actually browse the the different available options for connecting to Data Hub uh, for the different levels of security policies. Um, or you can use the advanced section to manually specify our options. In the event that you ever need to when browsing isn't possible, uh, as is common with some OPC UA servers, um, uh, let's go ahead and manually define our settings using the advanced section. Uh, so for my configuration name, I'm just going to call that Data Hub UA. And for the endpoint URL, uh, remember we copied that to the clipboard in Data Hub earlier, so I can simply go right click and select paste and it'll paste that endpoint right in there so that I make sure that I don't make any um, user mistakes or anything in entering that. So next we need to select the security policy in mode. Uh, so security policy, uh, we can select any of the four, first four options in this list which are supported by Data Hub. Uh, we're going to select the most secure option as I mentioned earlier, Basic 256, SHA 256. And we're going to keep sign and encrypt as the message security mode. And last but not least, we need to define the authentication. Uh, we could technically use Anonymous here, since that is still enabled in our UA server and Data Hub, but it's more secure to use authentication. So we'll need to select username, password. I'm going to enter my username from Data Hub. Click Store so that I can enter my password. Okay. 
Since Connect Automatically is enabled, as you can see here, uh, UA Expert will attempt to connect as soon as we click OK. So I'm going to click OK. Now, because UA Expert doesn't yet have the security certificate from Data Hub, we get this prompt as to whether or not we want to trust it or not. Uh, we do want to go ahead and trust it. So I'm going to click Trust Server Certificate and then Continue. Notice, though, the disconnected plug. So we're still not connected. That's because Data Hub still doesn't trust the UA security certificate that UA Expert used to try to connect. So we do need to jump back over to our Data Hub UA server settings. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go back to my OPC UA section. Now notice down here there's a counter for rejected certificates. Notice that incremented to one. Now that corresponds to our connection attempt from the UA expert. We could certainly take that at face value and click this accept all button. Or if we click the manage certificates button here, you can see that our UA expert attempt is in the rejected certificate section. So I can highlight that and I can go to click the accept button. You see that removes it from that list. If we get to OPC UA private certificate, you'll see it's now listed in there as an approved um, and uh, accepted certificate. So uh, now both the client and the server trust each other and we'll be able to connect. <clears throat> this section is also where you could choose to manually import any UA client certificates using the import button if you prefer not to have to accept rejected certificates. Uh, simply export the certificate from UA, your UA client and I'll show you how that's done in UA Expert when we jump back over there. And then here in Data Hub you click this import button and browse to that certificate. Uh, now if we go back to the rejected certificates <coughs> you could also use this import button here um, if you wanted to um, import the certificates of any UA client you explicitly want to not trust, thereby refusing any connections from that client. So we can go ahead and click OK to close out of the Manage Certificates section. Um, also, if you so choose, um, you could click the Application Certificate and you have the option of exporting Data Hub's OPC UA Server Certificate. Uh, if you're working with a UA um, server that or UA client that does require you to pre-import that certificate doesn't give you the option of approving it when you try to connect. Um, so that's where you can go to do that. I'm just going to click OK to get out of that. And uh, since we've established a trust relationship between UA Expert and Data Hub, I'm going to jump back over to my UA Expert and complete our connection. So back over here in Uni UA Expert, um, first I want to show you um, where you could export the UA Experts security certificates. So you go to the settings menu, manage certificates, and you click the copy application certificate to button uh, at the bottom, and that allows you to specify a location to save the certificate, which you could then go back over into data and import as I showed you. So let's go ahead and close this and establish our UA connection to data. Up. So I'm going to right click on that connection, go to connect, and you'll see it did successfully connect this time. Um, so now we can browse the data hub address space. Um, so if I go to the object section, you'll see my InTouch data data domain from data hub available in there. I'm going to expand that. And uh, you'll see my, uh, my InTouch connection in the OI gateway is listed there under, as a folder. So I'm going to expand that. And uh, there's my pump pressure item. I want to grab that, drag it over to the data access view. And as you can see, I'm getting a uh, I'm getting uh, successful value changes and timestamps uh, with a good status. And if I bring up my window here, you'll see that that corresponds to the values changing in my actual InTouch application. So as you can see, setting up connections to one door data via Data Hub using OPC UA is straightforward and secure. With flexible and convenient features like UA discovery and multiple transport protocols supported, Data Hub is a powerful OPC UA gateway for access to a wide variety of data sources securely. Get a free trial of Data Hub on our website and try it with your own Wonderware and other data sources and UA clients. As always, if you have questions beyond what either this video or the help documentation answer, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team using the information provided here.